Hello everyone. In this presentation, I am going to give five tips related to root canal treatment. Mostly they are related to radiographs and diagnosis and I have already made some five tips uh, related to doing root canal treatment. So when you find some time, just watch those tips also. It will be really helpful. Now let's proceed with the first tip for this day. Mobility in a painful tooth. We often get to see patients who come and sit in in our dental office and say that I am having a painful tooth and which is also mobile. What do we first think about it? We often think or consider that it could be because of a periodontal reason but we have to understand that whenever there is a painful tooth with mobility and when the nearby teeth are not mobile we have to think of a disease of endodontic origin. I will explain this with a, a graphical representation. This is just a normal tooth where the pulp is just little inflamed. And once the infection takes over, the pulp will be filled with pus. Once the pus fills the entire pulp, the, there is no space to accommodate this pus. So there should be some space which is available, it has to find some space where the pus can go off. So the pus will get accumulated in the space between the bone and the periodontal ligament. There is very limited space or literally speaking that there is no actual space which is present. So this pus gets accumulated in this space thus pushing the tooth out of the socket. Once the tooth is pushed out of the socket by this pus, the tooth will start become little more by little mobile. So that's the reason for a mobile tooth in a painful endodontically involved situation. Often dentists think that the tooth has become mobile and the, maybe the probable treatment option is extraction, but no. Just you prepare an access cavity. Once an access cavity is prepared, most often there will be a drainage of pus, maybe a one or two drops of pus through the access cavity. Even if there is no actual drainage of pus through the access cavity, the symptoms will get relieved. Maybe within a day or two, the entire mobility disappears and the patient will be back to normal. One more typical symptom that the patient always give while complaining with, with mobility and pain is whenever they bite or whenever they close their mouth this tooth will come in contact in occlusion first before any other teeth so there is no need for even occlusal reduction or they, we can do some selective grinding if needed but but in most situations just prepare the access cavity and just proceed with a regular root canal treatment preferably it is better to avoid doing a single visit root canal treatment in those situations and in this situation we also need to administer antibiotic amoxicillin and metronidazole are the drugs of choice from my point of view i do not recommend some heavy antibiotics for patients who are having a peri periapical abscess mobility pain and the situations so whenever you find a patient with a mobility just check the contra uh, contralateral tooth the same tooth whether it's mobile usually the periodontal problems are generalized and endodontic problems are localized if there is a single isolated tooth with a decay or trauma and which is mobile and pain then root canal treatment is the treatment of choice and don't think about periodontal treatments or extraction let's see the next step okay cbct is getting popular each and every day cbct is a very very helpful tool in diagnosis and management of endodontic diseases we can see that the two one the maxillary central incisor tooth is totally it gives an impression that it is totally calcified so there is a we can see the slice by slice uh, appearance 
of deeper insight maybe below the middle third which is not visible in a regular radiograph but in a cbct we could see that there's occurrence of little little we can see the canal start to form over there yeah there is there is a little presence always remember that whenever there is a calcifications calcifications will always start from coronally and progresses towards apically and most of the time the problems or the endorotic disease originate because of the infections which are present very close to the apical area that's why we always say that cleaning and shaping of the apical end is very very important so this studying by slice slice by slice of this is possible with the help of cbct so whenever we find some difficulties in diagnosis in the disease or which is the canals are not visible in uh, radiograph in those situations we can always go for a cbct which is which is uh, uh, re the radiation hazard of cbct is much much lesser compared to that of uh, conventional ct scans so we can always go for this the same tooth in the different section we can see that we can slice by slice cut off in any angle that we think of and we can see that there, there is occurrence or the presence of a patent canal in the middle of the root from maybe from the middle third to the apical end which is which 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 may be in a radiograph which is totally totally it is it is not present and so this gives an idea whether what treatment that we can do whether this tooth can be saved or it has to be we should go for an endrontic surgery or alternative treatment plan so cbct for fractures still it is in a developing and still fra for fractures uh, cbct is helpful but maybe it is not the best but for general diagnosis or to study about the lesions and all those things we can still go for so that the same tooth we could do a regular just a regular root canal treatment not even under microscope uh, this that was possible because of the confidence of having that there is a canal if we know that there is a canal we can all be obviously try to find out from locating from which direction which location which angulation we have to proceed further so i would recommend that cbct is really helpful in many situations just go for it so the next we will see that area measurement in a periapical lesion this is a default presence a function which is present with most of the rvg softwares but we are not aware of that uh, this is a dense invaginators and we can see that there is a periapical lesion which is present just imagine we have to do a follow-up maybe let's think that we are going to do a root canal treatment for a tooth with a periapical lesion and we don't know we have no idea whether the lesion is progressing or it's just remaining the same or it is regressing so what we can do in such situations are we have to do an area measurement so this i am using it's a vixwin pro software which comes with a gendex rvg most other rvg softwares also have a area measurement i am just outlining the outline of the the, the area of with a periapical lesion and we can just measure it and it's all default by present within the software itself and once we measure it gives the size so here it gives as uh, the area is 1 or 2.4 millimeter square okay so we can record this value and we can enter it in the patient chart so maybe after six months in a radiograph maybe we can take two or three radiographs and we can take an average value that depends upon each and every dentist so we can do an area measurement again and we will get some idea whether the lesion or our treatment is successful or not so i feel like that this is a fairly simple technique and it does not take even a fraction of a minute we are not aware of this so in many situations this is really helpful and i would recommend that it is better to utilize this function in our uh, treatment planning and while doing the treatments the next tip is the site whenever there is 
a sinus tract the patient is coming with a swelling or on clinical examination you are finding that there is a sinus tract the root canal treatment is generally easy okay so when there will be a swelling or sinus tract is whenever the patient is having a bigger or a large size pulp chamber we often see the young kids coming with more frequently swell, swollen uh, cheeks compared to that of adults why because the size of the pulp chamber for young individuals will be more so whenever there is more there is more bacterial load and whenever there is more bacterial load there will be more formation of the pus because of the defense mechanism the body body is exerting and because of this there will be more accumulation of pus and this pus gets accumulated in the periapical region or into the facial spaces leading to the swelling if there is no swelling maybe in case of a long standing infection there will be a sinus tract so just imagine why the sinus tract is patent and active because there is a profuse form formation of large quantity of pus in this patient that that specific tooth so just imagine so whenever i see a patient with a sinus tract or whenever i see a patient with a swelling i always consider yes this patient without even with a radiograph we can assume that the pulp chamber is going to be big wider and the canals are most often patent and our root canal treatment is going to be very simple so this is a simple clinical tip that we always can keep it in your mind so whenever there is a swelling or whenever there is a presence of a sinus tract the canals are patent obviously there will be literally in most situations there will be no calcifications there can be exceptions but 95 percentage of the time and the root canal treatment is often very very easy the last tip for the day let's see that the articaine infiltrations articaine is getting more and more popular in the field of endodontics why because the each for every endodontist or for every dentist one of the nightmare is the controlling the pain and doing the root canal treatment in a patient who is having uh, a hard tooth whatever the anesthetic technique that you are using it may not work i previously have made a video how to anesthetize a hard tooth i will put the link in the description you can go back and watch and again how this articaine comes the articaine has a property that it is highly active even in infiltrations even in mandible for mandibular molars infiltrations are not effective that's what we are taught but articaine infiltrations are effective even in case of hot tooth so my recommendation would be for a hard tooth anesthesia you can go for an inferior alveolar nerve block with lignocaine the regular block and you are seeing that the tooth is not anesthetized properly so in that situation with articaine you can go for an infiltration close to the buccal and needed if lingual of the molar or which of the tooth that we need to anesthetize whether there is lignocaine and here articaine yes we can give it will not create any problem so articaine infiltrations are really helpful and it may be the time that we get little articaine and load our um, anesthetic techniques with even articaine anesthesia it is really helpful it works like amazing and and whenever you find difficulties with lignocaine anesthesia you can always go for articaine infiltration but at the same time do not infiltrate with lignocaine and articaine in the same location lignocaine for block and articaine for infiltration that's a good choice for most situations so whenever you find the tooth is more inflamed or the patient is very apprehensive and even after anesthesia the patient is very appreciative to you and even with the vibration from the aorta the patient is not able to accept it just go for an articaine infiltration okay so that's for today and by the way i am dr benin and if you are a dentist or a dental student watching this video kindly subscribe to my youtube channel smart dentistry i will make more videos and uh, comment 
I will make there are many 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 subscribers commenting to make videos on different different topics I will make videos in all those topics in a short duration thank you for watching subscribe give a thumbs up if you like this video stay tuned and have a nice day